Hey viewers, it's me, your good friend Idex. I have a PowerPoint presentation to show you. Welcome to my presentation. In this presentation, I will present things to you. Some of the things I say, I will read off of the slides. Some of the things I say, I will not read off of the slides. The computer running the slides is now shutting down. Wait, what? <laughs> it's working! What? Bowser? The Koopa? From the Mario games? Hey, it's King Koopa to you, thank you very much. What are you doing here? Oh, nothing. Except evil things. Uh, just let me restart Windows 2000 so I can get on with my presentation. Wait a sec. Why is it not booting anymore? <laughs> what did I ever do to you? Hmm. Actually, nothing. But I'm evil, so I do evil things like destroy your PC with a malicious macro virus. <laughs> but why would you? Oh wait, this is a Truddle One video about malicious Office files, isn't it? So in Microsoft Office, there are these things called macros. A macro is essentially a bit of code that is supposed to be used to automate repetitive tasks. For example, you might start writing some text, and in the first draft, you notice that you use a lot of contractions. You may also notice that you're just under the minimum word requirement for your essay, and splitting the contractions up will make your document slightly longer. Also, you're writing this document for a grammar Nazi who hates contractions because they ain't professional, and ain't ain't a word and I ain't gonna say it, and I ain't gonna check to see that it ain't ain't in the dictionary. Oh, it ain't a real contraction because it ain't made of two separate real words. But if it were made of two real words, then it won't be a problem. But anyway, you want to split up all your contractions. Uh, could you just find and replace? Let me rephrase. You want to split up all of your contractions with just one button. So, you write a macro that replaces all contractions with their split up forms. That's what macros are supposed to be used for. In Office 97, they're edited using a built-in tool called VBA, or Visual Basic for Applications. Visual Basic is a programming language that... certainly... exists. In the modern era, you can use it to develop for the .NET framework, and it's basically just a worse C-sharp at this point. But in the 90s, Visual Basic was its own standalone thing, and VBA is based off of that. And I say is and not was, because this IDE, which looks directly out of 1997, is still available in modern versions of Office. And it still uses a modified Visual Basic 6 to power the macros, even though regular Visual Basic 6 lost support in 2008. Which was 16 years ago, by the way. This is also the only place where pre.NET Visual Basic still exists. <laughs> well, sure, you can use these to modify your little text documents. Or you can run terminal commands, like this one that destroys your computer by deleting System32, and have it run when the document opens! <laughs> huh? Oh hey look! Microsoft knew even in 1997 that macros might sometimes be harmful, and it's warning me before it opens! Neat! I'm safe! Well, I just need to get more creative at this. But, first of all, some people might just skip warnings and click allow anyway. I mean, Internet Explorer 5 shows a similar warning when you are visiting a secure website. I say that again! Not when you are visiting an insecure website, but a secure website. But anyway, just to make this attack better, how about when the macro runs, I disable the virus check from showing up further? There's no way it lets you disable that check from inside a macro. It lets you disable that from inside a macro, what the heck? Well, I, I guess I just won't open any documents from you. Who said that the document that infects you is gonna be from me? Because I also wrote this bit of code here, which copies the virus into the blank Word document. Now, every time the user makes a normal Word document, the virus is attached to it! Now, all I gotta do is make it so it destroys Windows on a specific date, like August 4th, so it has time to spread, 
and once that day comes, open any Word file, and now your computer is gone! <laughs> well, darn. What? Why are you barely reacting? Because Windows 2000 and Office 97 are obsolete! It's 2024, I was just playing in a virtual machine. Anyway, while these macroviruses are fun and interesting, they have also actually caused real damage in the past. Really? Yes, really, but away with you, you're getting annoying. In March of 1999, someone using a hacked account posts a file called list.doc to a Usenet group. This document contained a massive list of, uh, websites that would get this channel demonetized. And a macro containing the Melissa virus. Melissa basically just copied the document it was in and sent it to the first 50 contacts it could find in your Microsoft Outlook contact list with the message, don't show anyone else, winky face which is obviously supposed to reflect the NSFW contents of the document, but literally as I'm typing the script, I realize it's probably a joke about how it sends itself to everyone you know. Around 30 minutes after opening the message, you get a phone call from your boss saying, WHY ARE YOU LOOKING AT THAT SORT OF CONTENT AT WORK, YOU PERVERT? Implying that your boss has also opened the document, and as a result, his employees now think he's been looking at that sort of content at work as well creating a massive exponential chain. Ah! Uh, I can explain! I was hacked! The spread of Melissa started in adult-oriented groups, but because people that partake in these groups have actual lives, or at the very least, know people with actual lives, it eventually found its way to the corporate world, clogging up email servers in the process. Because email infrastructure was much weaker then, it ended up disrupting Microsoft, Intel, and the United States Marines. Yeah, the stupid macrovirus caused national security issues. As a result, the guy that made it was tracked down and arrested. This guy, David L. Smith, pled guilty to writing the Melissa virus and was sentenced to 20 months in prison and a fine of $5,000. Which seems kinda low considering what it did. Melissa also disables the macro editor. It's menu option on Office. But if you press Alt F11, you can still open the macro editor and see the source code. From there, we can see what other kinds of features it has, like disabling Word's virus warning, and... Editing the Windows registry. Which Melissa does to check if it's already infected you. Because a Word document should totally be allowed to edit the registry. Also, this guy's variable names are weird. Like, the email's contents are stored in a variable called Break him off a slice. And the object that represents Outlook is called Unga Das Outlook. Honestly, I hate it when people do silly variable names. You're not being funny, you're just being confusing. You hear that, David? I don't think you're funny. Unless we're talking about the appearance of your face, of course. The payload isn't even that interesting either. It just writes a Simpsons quote when the time of day matches the current date. But at the end of the day, Microsoft has really been trying to keep people away from using macros that they don't know. In fact, in modern versions of Office, documents that have macros must have a special file extension, and starting in 2022, Office by default won't even let you open files with macros if you downloaded the files from the internet. And also, just as a security tip, make sure file extensions aren't hidden. To change this setting, open Windows Explorer, probably by opening a folder. Then, go to Folder Options. Finally, go to View, and make sure that Hide Extensions for Known File Types is unchecked. Now you can see what type of file something is before you click on it. If it's a .docx, macros are disabled. But if it's a .m, there might be macros on that document. And also, alternatively, you could just use Google Docs. It's not on your computer, so it won't destroy your computer. Plus, it's free! And if you were worried about privacy, you wouldn't be using Microsoft Word anyway. But anyway, thanks for watching, and I'll see you next time!